We are um, we're moving into graphing. Now you've done lots of graphing throughout your um, many years of high school, and so this is going to draw on. I mean, in the same way as arithmetic did, a lot of skills you already have. However, just a bit of a warning. Um, when you first learned how to graph, let's just think for a second. Help me out. What kinds of functions or or types of shapes, basically, do you know how to graph when you're just thinking on the Cartesian plane? Start off really easy. Straight lines, okay, where do you go from there? Parabolas? Cubics. Okay, so all of those are in the family of polynomials, okay? Do you know how to draw anything else? You can draw hyperbolas, okay? So that's one on x and all its you know, derivatives, which is not a, not a polynomial, but pretty similar. Do you know how to graph other stuff? Circles. Circles, very good. So they're not even functions anymore, are they? But what are they called? Starts with an R. They're called relations or relationships, right? Um, exponential. We've got exponential functions, very good. Have we got most of our categories? Okay, yeah, all right, so you got logs, which are the inverse functions, okay? Um, come on, guys, big area. That's, that's, that's still logs. Uh, triangles. Parallelogram. Really? Come on, guys. Sine, cos, tan. Oh, yeah, I remember those. Okay, now, with all of those tools, we got the opportunity, the luxury, as it were, to treat each of those as like, oh, here's a big category of graphs. And it's like, well, yeah, we, we met like sign in like year 10 and we spent a whole time just graphing that, okay? Uh, and then like parabolas and locus, which you've been doing more recently. Let's just spend all our time doing that. Now that you're in the complex plane, we treat you like extension two students. And so we're like, okay, look, you know how to do something, like, you know how to interpret this, right? We're going to give you all the different kinds of graphs that you're already familiar with and a small number that you aren't familiar with, but we're just going to give them to you all together. We're not going to say, okay, all parabolas today, guys. You're going to get like at least, well, pretty much every graph I'm going to show you is a different kind of function or relation. So, quickly, before we get into the complex plane, when you see a sentence like this, what does it mean? How do you interpret? Because, like, just look at that for a second. This is another language. I mean, this is literally another language, right? Like what we mean by graph and what we mean by all of this is very, you know, subject specific language. So if you were to try and translate this without like using the minimum number of like mathematical words and notation, how would you do it? Find the roots, takers. Find the roots, okay. True, but again, like that's quite specific oh, language. Okay, like what, what do those even mean? It's Harry, do you want to give a suggestion? Draw a line. Okay, all right, so there's going to be like some sort of connected set of dots which will form a line, okay? Now, when you see this, right, all of the dots that you have, the reason why you get this set of dots, right, and not like say this set of dots, or this set of dots, or all these other kinds of things, is because all the dots you choose are going to together obey this relationship. That's what it really means, okay? So just alongside here, because it's going to be very important when we move to the complex plan, here's my translation of that sentence, okay? When you say graph, da 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 da, right? What you mean is draw the points, or plot the points, whose x and y, like that's what these are, right? Their values, their x and y coordinates, obey this equation, like they actually make the equation true, okay? I suppose you could say satisfy, that would be a more mathematical word. Okay, that's what it really means. And that's why, for example, if you put it to put in like 0, 1, x equals 0, y equals 1, that pair of numbers, that ordered pair, does not obey this rule. It doesn't fit, right? So that's why you don't draw it. But if I said to you, okay, how about 0, 6? 0, 6 does obey it, so it's like, I'm going to put a point on it, and then I'm just going to keep on doing it. And of course, that's a very laborious way to do things, which is why we learn tools like, okay, find the roots, and then recognize the overall shape of this, and then off you go. So now, therefore, if I gave you a sentence like this, okay. Now the language is ever so slightly changed, but think about what this means, and therefore think about what the parallel here is. Okay, I'll give you the easy bit. I'm still going to be drawing, right? So this also means draw. But now these points. They don't represent x and y, like just a random pair of real numbers, okay? What you're drawing is actually a set of complex numbers. 
We just happen to represent them with points. Okay. By the way, what was the other main way that we used to visually represent uh, complex numbers? Not as points, but as uh, yeah, as vectors. So you've got magnitude and direction. Okay. So I could draw them as vectors, but for now, I'm just interested in them as points. I want to draw the complex numbers whose now x and y, right? There's, there's no x or y here, okay? But on the complex plane, we can use x and y to represent. What do x and y represent for a complex number? The real and imaginary parts, right? So I want to draw all the complex numbers whose real and imaginary parts, and now the rest of it is just the same. That's just an equation that says, I want the real and imaginary parts to do such and such a thing, okay? So satisfy this different equation. Now, underneath where you've written this black translation, right? I want you to understand, you're gonna approach this in one of two ways and you're gonna need to um, be able to understand both and master both because it's you need different techniques for different kinds of questions. So you can do this either with algebra. Think back to when we did complex arithmetic and we said, okay, look, this thing here, I can treat this as a purely algebraic object and then work with it. So I can do it either algebraically or we recognize that complex numbers are more than just algebra x's and y's we can think of these as visual objects right so i can do it geometrically now looking at this question right looking at what the question is asking you to do if you had a choice all the other things be equal which of these would you prefer to do if either of them could be possible i think we would prefer geometrically but why because you can visualize it? Yeah, you're, you're trying to draw this thing. You want a picture, right? Well, the picture is the language that geometry speaks, okay? So if you possibly can, what you want to do is think about this thing in terms of geometry. If you have no other choice, like I don't know what this is geometrically, then you do it algebraically. So think with it. Let's do this as an example. E.g. What, um, what do those complex um, numbers do when you put absolute value signs around? What do we call that? Starts with an M. Modulus. This is the modulus, right? Yeah. And the modulus, right? So I translate this as the modulus of Z, whatever that complex number happens to be. The modulus of Z is always that number, right? Let's push on this a little bit more. How do we define the modulus again? What does that mean? Distance. Distance from the origin, right? Very good. So there's a whole bunch of Zs. There's a whole bunch of complex numbers that are five units away from the origin, right? There's a whole bunch of them. In fact, there's an infinite set of them. If you were to plot every single one, what shape would they trace out? A circle, right? So let's draw this. Okay, so here's my circle, and you can see it's centered on the origin because that's where I'm measuring from. Uh, I've drawn this, but come on, give me a bit more detail. This could be any circle right now, so what would you like me to write on there? Radius fire. Okay, I'm going to have some um, a real and a mat. Sorry, the other way around. Oh, oh, no. You're all awake, that's good. I've got my real and my imaginary axes in the right spots, and what else do you want to put on there? I, I should have some fives, right? Five, origin, five. Five, negative five, and there, the center, that's a pretty important spot. Okay. Oh. That's a great question. So here's the funny thing, right? Uh, if I were describing a point, like if I were describing that point there, I would call it 5i, right? That's what the point is, because remember, it is, it's off the real axis, right? So 5, the number, as a number, is on the real axis only, and this is not there, okay? But if I'm describing like, on the axis, like the scale, right? The scale is not about like um, one i, two i, three i. The scale is the y number, and the y number is a real number. So that five that I put there is the marking on the axis as opposed to the coordinates of the point. Does that make sense? Uh, it, it's similar to the fact that if I were doing a Cartesian axis, um, you could just as equally say this point, I'm just going to label it like that. Right? Or alternatively, I could say that. And those are both true. 
you're talking about very slightly different things. You're either saying, what are the coordinates of the thing, or where are you on the axis, and they're not exactly the same. Does that make sense? So why don't we draw the shape that it makes, not the actual vectors? Ah, that's a great question. Um, the reason is completely practical, which is that, um, as you'll see in a minute, sometimes you're going to have a heck of a lot of points. Right? So if you were to draw all those vectors, um, you're going to be sitting here for a while. And what you draw, it becomes less meaningful because those vectors are going to start to overlap and it becomes a bit of a nightmare. Okay. Alright, so the modulus of z is always fine. So I can deal with this simply geometrically. Okay? But you won't always be able to do it. Sometimes you must appeal to algebra. So how would I do it? How would I treat this thing algebraically if I didn't recognize it immediately? Oh, that's a good one. What do you reckon? What could I do? If I want to do this algebraically, I need to know, like, okay, 5 is 5. But this thing here, I, I don't have to just write it. Like, I can write it in more detail, right? The modulus of z, think back. You maybe want to draw yourself a small diagram to remind yourself. If you have, let's just have the first quadrant. If you've got some complex number z, right? Let's put z up there. Where is mod z on this diagram? Where is it? Is it not the interval? from z to the origin. Do you agree with that? Right. So there's mod z. Okay. Now if you want to find that distance, then all you need is this distance here and this distance here, right? Because they form a right angle triangle. Okay. Now what are those distances? They're x and y. Not x and i, y, by the way. That's, again, this is the number of units as opposed to the coordinates. Okay. So therefore, if this is just a right angle triangle, then mod z, instead of writing it like that, I can write it in terms of all x's and y's. It's Pythagoras. So what would you like me to write? X plus it's the square root of x squared plus y squared. Is it? It's just a distance. Yeah. Yes, you with me? Keep in mind, this is a distance, so it is not i, y, it's a distance, so it's y. Okay. All right, so that's that, and that's just equal to 5. So now I can just push on this a little more geometrically, put it algebraically, put it in a form you're more familiar with, write it without the square root there. You're like, oh, of course that's a circle. Right? Does this make sense? So I gave you an easy example to begin with because like, yeah, all right, cool. We recognize this. This just means all the points whose distance is always five from the origin, so you can draw that easily, but you don't always get one that's so neat. You'll get something that might require you to push on the algebra. Okay. 